Little long, baby. Bow staff, best weapon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my review in progress of Wo Long. This title was sent to me by Koei Tecmo so that I could give it a look and tell you guys my opinions on it. And also in order to be able to create all of the content that I'm going to be creating here for the channel and uploading over the next couple of days. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons why I still haven't finished the game at this point is because I've basically been recording everything. I've been do working on a blind playthrough that I'm going to be uploading to the channel here over the next couple of days because usually you guys tend to enjoy that type of content so hopefully you're looking forward to that because I've been having an absolute blast playing the game. As a matter of fact, the game ended up being a little bit more fun than I initially predicted because back when we received the very first demo for Wo Long, I remember jumping in and I was like, okay, let's check this out, let's see what this is all about. And at the very beginning, it's like, ooh, this combat isn't clicking with me. I don't understand what's going on. And now I got killed, and somehow the enemy that killed me is more powerful. It's like, this, this seems like something that I'm not going to enjoy myself all that much in. Then eventually, we struggled through, and we got to the final boss of that particular demo. Got our face smashed in repeatedly. And I remember thinking, man, this is just not clicking. But then... As we did more and more attempts on the boss and we looked for more flags in order to improve our morale, I was like, oh, okay, this morale thing is now clicking. I now understand how this morale system works, these flags, all of these things. This is actually an interesting thing. And then eventually the combat started clicking a little bit more. But I remember leaving that demo basically thinking, oh, you know, it's going to be a fun game to play here on the channel. It's going to be whatever. But now that I've been playing the final game, I'm like, oh, no, this is actually way more fun than I initially thought it was going to be. And I think the main reason behind that is because, you know, this is a game from the studio behind Neo. This is a game from Team Ninja, right? But when it comes to Wolong, I feel that mechanically, while it is simpler, as in it is easier to get into, it is easier to understand because of the systems that are in play with the game, it still manages to have a lot of depth into the customization that you do on your character, as well as mastering the combat system and all of that. But it's not like you have to think about, oh my god, there's three different poses and then there's key pulses and all these things. No, in here, it, it, things are a lot more simple while still providing you with a lot of depth. And I think that that simplicity is one of the things that really made me enjoy the game more because I'm not constantly thinking about, oh, what is the most optimal way of fighting here? What stance should I be in and all of that stuff? And uh, yeah. Uh, again, I ended up enjoying the game a lot more than I initially predicted. Now, you may be wondering, okay, but what is Wo Long like, Rurikan? What is it like? And I think it's kind of easy, but also a little bit diminutive to just say that, oh, it's a Neo, but it's themed around the Three Kingdoms era of China, which is something that Koei Tecmo uh, does a lot with its Dynasty Warriors series. You know, if you've ever played Dynasty Warriors, you know that that is around the, the Three Kingdoms era of China, the, the whole struggle between the Three Kingdoms, all of that war. I'm not a Three Kingdoms, uh, you know, a, a lore connoisseur, so to speak. I haven't even played that much Dynasty Warriors because... It's just, you know, it's it, the, the Musou genre is a genre that I tend to dip into every now and then. But the ones that I've enjoyed the most were actually the spin-offs, like the, the Hyrule Warriors and stuff. Those I really enjoyed. But the, the Dynasty Warriors stuff, I, I didn't really play that much. And it seems like some of the most recent ones weren't that amazing either. So it's whatever. But, um, you know, having this game, Wolong, theme, themed around the Three Kingdoms, was something that I really enjoyed. So... And the other thing is, the reason why I said that it's kind of diminutive to just call it, oh, it's a Neo, but themed around the Three Kingdoms era of China, is because I feel like this has quite a lot of unique mechanics that separate it from Neo. Not just the simplicity, but just the way that it works. Like the way that morale works with planting the flags. And I'm going to get into more detail about that when we get to the gameplay portion of this video. But the... I really appreciate the way that the morale system works because it allows me to kind of do risk reward and how I explore the maps and I'll talk more about that. I love th what they've done with the spirit gauge which is another mechanic that I'm going to get uh, in depth when we get to the, the gameplay aspects because spirit gauge basically enables you to infinitely cast spells, infinitely cast martial arts and do all of these crazy things and I think that that's a lot of fun. And you know you also have companions which is something that you also had in a previous game uh, that they've worked on, uh, which was uh, Stranger of Paradise. Uh, but 
the difficulty in Stranger of Paradise got really weird by the time I got to the end game. I hope that doesn't happen with Will Long, but I will most likely have a follow-up video just like I did for Wild Hearts a while back. You know, following up on this uh, review in progress to give you guys my thoughts once I actually finish the game. But overall, I've been really enjoying Will Long, and if you're even just like remotely curious about it, my advice to you would be jump on and download the demo. Because, you know, some of you might be hesitant to try out demos like, ah, I don't want to play a demo, you know. But the thing is, when it comes to this demo, the demo is literally like the first two levels of the game and your progress carries over. So you're not going to be wasting your time. You're going to be testing what is essentially the first two levels of the final game. And the demo only lasts until like the 26th of March or something like that, I think. So you might want to jump on that. Even if you're just like remotely curious, I would heavily advise you to check it out. Like check out my starter guide in case you're struggling. I should also check out Fighting Cowboys starter guide because he's also going to be working uh, on one of those. And his is probably going to be a little bit more detailed and advanced than my own. But, you know, there's going to be starter guides from people about this game. Check those out if you're struggling. And then just test out the demo because... I think you'll be surprised with uh, how fun this game can actually be. But anyways, let's start things off. As per usual, I'm going to be starting with the visuals. In terms of visuals, I find that the game looks pretty good. Uh, there's not really a whole lot to point. The game is not really going to blow your mind. You guys can see the gameplay going on in this video. Um, but even though it's not going to blow your mind, I think it looks pretty damn good and solid. And it provides you with a pretty good experience. So not a whole lot of complaints there. In terms of animations, I think that there are some really cool animations, particularly when it comes to the executions. They really went all out with some of these executions and they feel nice to pull off while they're in the middle of combat. It's like, ah, I triggered the, you know, you break their spirit gauge and they're just like, stab them with either a sword or a bow staff or any of the other multiple weapons that are in the game. Those feel really good. Uh, there are some animations on some of the martial arts that I'm just like, uh, th that looked a little bit stiff, but that's just being a little bit nitpicky when it comes to that. Overall, I find that animations look really good. And pulling off the uh, fatal, fatal endings or whatever it is that they call them, the fatal blows, those just feel really, really good. And you always want to like, oh man, let me just continue to hit this dude until I get to pull off another fatal blow because it feels great. There's a lot of gore in the game, by the way. Lots of blood splurting everywhere. Uh, so, you know, that's something to look forward to if you're into that type of stuff. So, that's cool. In terms of cutscenes, I found that the cutscenes are really, really good. Uh, I, I really don't have any complaints in terms of like animation in cutscenes or the stuff that is happening in cutscenes. I found them um, a little bit above what I usually uh, expect, uh, particularly after, you know, playing Stranger of Paradise. This is like way, 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 way better. And the same thing with like uh, Wild Hearts. This is, again, way, 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 way better than, than that stuff, at least from my personal opinion. But, you know, you guys can let me know when eventually you play the game, if you do end up playing the game. But I do have a minor complaint when it comes to those, and that is the fact that it's 30 FPS cutscenes. And I'm just like, bro, I want to enter an age where we can normalize 60 FPS cutscenes. Can, can we please? It's like, I, it's just, to me, it's very jarring when you go from playing the game at smooth 60 FPS, and then there's a cutscene, and it's 30 FPS. I don't know if it's a me thing. Because usually a lot of people give me pushback on this. Ah, oh, it's fine. You're just like, just shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. It's like, I, I'm sorry. It's just so weird for me when that happens. I don't understand why. In terms of performance overall, and by the way, everything in this review is based off of the PlayStation 5 version of the game. In terms of the performance, overall, the performance is pretty good. Although there are some situations where I've seen a couple of uh, hiccups here and there. It's nothing major, and it usually recovers pretty fast. The problem is that the combat when it comes to Wo Long is the type of combat that is very twitch based. You're going to have to press a button at exactly the right time. And if there's a frame hiccup, it can become terribly frustrating. And that was definitely one of the situations that I find myself in, found myself in and one of the more challenging bosses that this game offers because the boss would charge at me and I would have there's like a, a very minimal frame for this specific boss. There's a very minimal frame in which you can actually counter his attack by parrying, not parrying, it's, it's called deflecting in this game, by deflecting one of the boss's critical attacks. And sometimes there would be a, a slow up right before the boss's attack connected with me. And that was, Jesus Christ, trying to adapt to being able to deflect that. 
was incredibly frustrating. But again, this was literally one situation. In most of the situations, whenever there's a little hiccup here and there, it's not really a big deal. It doesn't really bother me all that much. And overall, the performance is pretty good on the PS5. This is one of the reasons why I recommend check out the demo because I've heard that like, you know, differing reports when it comes to the PC side of things. So make sure to check that out for yourself. But overall, not a whole lot of complaints when it comes to visuals and animation. I thought it was pretty good. Okay, so the sound fidelity of the game is pretty good. Everything works pretty much the way that you expect. Everything sounds the way that you would expect whenever you hit an enemy, whether that is with a blade or with a stick or, you know, because you do have bow staffs in this game. Um, you know, the enemy roars and the, the, the blood splurts, all of that stuff. Everything sounds like you would expect. I don't really have a whole lot of complaints when it comes to that. As a matter of fact, if anything... I appreciate the fact that it feels like they went and gotten sounds from like old kung fu movies because it, it, I don't know if it's just if it's just me or if any of you guys ever watch like old kung fu movies because I used to watch those when I was way way younger because my dad was into that stuff I think and I remember watching some of those and for some reason the sounds in this instantly take me back the sounds of like the the Chinese sword in particular because like for, for some strange reason, I'm a sucker for Chinese swords. I, I don't know why. I like Chinese swords way more than katanas. That That's just me. But like the, the sound that the Chinese sword makes whenever you are hitting somebody that is blocking with a metal uh, weapon or even with um, with like a, uh, a wood weapon or something like that, the sounds feel remarkably accurate as well as the sounds of the bow staff, which has been the weapon that I've been using the most. I've been having a blast playing bow staff. It's just so satisfying when you hear the thud of the bow staff just smacking on somebody's skull. But don't, 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 don't. It, it's, I can't explain it. It's just, I love the sound of that. In terms of like the soundtrack and stuff, I think it's pretty good. It's dynamic. It changes depending on whether you are in combat or not. It changes depending on which level you're in and all of that stuff. I think the soundtrack does a good job of conveying the overall sentiment of the game. But it's nothing that, it, you know, to, to re that really blows my mind, right? Because to me, it's just the problem when it comes to soundtracks to me is like everything almost needs to be put up against Final Fantasy XIV. It's just going to be a very high wall for anybody ever to climb, right? So to me, the soundtrack is good. It's not going to blow my mind, but it's pretty good. In terms of voice acting, uh, I don't really have any complaints. I think the voice acting is pretty good. I've been playing the English version. I think it's all right. Uh, the thing is, obviously, lip syncing is not going to be almost there at all because uh, I believe that, I don't know if the characters were lip synced to the Chinese version or Japanese version or whatever, but they clearly were not lip -sync, lip synced to the English version. But then again, you know, as someone who's watched the old Kung Fu movies, it doesn't feel that different from that. So yeah, it doesn't bother me that much, but yeah, that sound. Now let's get into story. Now, story has actually been a little bit of a surprise because like I said, I never really looked too much into like the whole Three Kingdoms thing. Never played that much Dynasty Warriors, so it's not really something that I look into all that much. But I feel like this might end up being the ideal introduction point for me into into this whole lore of the, the Three Kingdoms because, you know, you have a character who's basically a soldier who is participating in all of these different battles of, of the Three Kingdoms. This is not, like, accurate in terms of what actually happened in China back in the day. This is obviously a, a fantasy version of it, and there's demons, and there's all of these things uh, happening, right? But um, it's, it's really cool to just see your character interact with all of these other characters that are also important characters. And you kind of, like, start developing bonds with some of them. Some of these characters I've heard from before, like those of you who've been with the channel for a while, you'll remember that I've that I've uh, did some Dark Souls series with Hengist. And Hengist would constantly talk about a particular uh, character from, um, from Dynasty Wars, which was Guan Yu. So I got to see Guan Yu in this game. It's like, oh, Guan Yu, look at he's got He's got the, the, the friggin' halberds. I don't know. It was it was just cool. And, uh, you know, some of the characters I vibe with a lot. Like, I really like Zhang Fei for whatever reason. He's a really cool character. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of characters that you interact with and you get to play um, with them in your team. So I thought that that was a neat thing. You interact with these important characters. And 
there's just something about the events that take place in Wo Long that are landing with me a lot more than I also expected. I don't know. It, this whole thing could just be recency bias, but I've just been having a lot of fun with the game. And it's surprising to me because, again, I've never really been someone who's been super interested in the, the Three Kingdoms stories and, and whatnot. But there's something about this one that I liked. And there's um, a pretty recent story moment in what I've experienced at this point, which, like I said, I'm about 30 hours into the game. Even though this this moment will probably happen earlier for some people because I've been uh, trying out different builds and trying out different game systems and whatnot, so my game time is a little bit inflated by all of that testing. But uh, there was definitely a moment where something happens that I was like, "Oh damn, that's some that's some heavy stuff that is going on here." Holy crap! So yeah, I'm I've been actually enjoying the story a lot. Again, there's something about Wu Long that I just feel like I've been enjoying it more than i usually enjoy these kinds of games but you know it is what it is so yeah story pretty good okay so now we come up on to obviously what is the most important part of all this which is the gameplay now the gameplay is what you would traditionally expect from a game like this which is it's going to have its challenging hack and slash stuff like i mentioned at the start of this video it is mechanically simple but it has a lot of depth in terms of you deflecting enemy attacks which is going to require you to be able to you know study the movement patterns of the enemies in order to be able to parry the right attacks at the right time you have to be able to parry the critical attacks that the enemies do because that's going to give you massive openings to break their spirit gauge and also be able to do your own uh counter attacks and stuff like that so that's really cool there's also a martial arts system in where every weapon can have like uh two martial arts which are basically special attacks for that weapon and it's not something that is like set in stone so like you could pick up a sword that has two uh, martial arts and then you can pick up you know a sword that has the same move set it's like literally the same sword so you could pick up iron sword number one and iron sword number two and iron sword number two could have two completely different martial arts which keeps things a little bit fresh and you know again just adds to that depth that i was talking about on top of it there's also spells which is very interesting because of the way that the spirit gauge works because the spirit gauge if you manage it right which basically is is about momentum almost if you manage your spirit gauge right you can basically cast as many spells as you want there's never a situation where you're like oh i i need to hold on to this spell to make sure that i have it when i really really need it it's more like no i'm gonna pop this spell off and if things go wrong i'm just gonna back up a little bit wait for the spirit gauge to refill or i'm going to attack to refill the spirit gauge faster and cast more spells so I really like that. I like not being limited. I like not be having to think about, oh, I better not use this spell here because I might need a little bit later in the level. It just allows you to experiment and just cast as many spells as you want. Not just spells, but the martial arts as well, which it just feels good. I love the fact that they don't really limit you in any way besides you need to manage this gauge, which means that's like, even though they don't limit you, it's not like you can just go into combat and like, oh, I'm going to cast this spell 50 times. You can't do that because you're going to run out of spirit gauge. You have to actually attack and melee to recover your spirit gauge or you have to back away from the mob, from the, the mob that you're fighting a little bit in order to recover your spirit gauge. There, there's a couple of different ways that you can use it. You can also deflect to recover your spirit gauge. So there's a, you know, a, a back and forth between you and the, the creature that you're fighting in order to see who's who's going to come out on top. It's like a tug of war almost because the the monsters that you are fighting also have their own spirit gauges in which like you know if they're winning if they're pushing you around they're going to be able to push you around more. If you're winning and you're pushing them around you're going to be able to push them around more. So it's just a system that is very satisfying to me. Now uh, on top of it, there's also an interesting stat system, because usually when it comes to RPGs, you're going to be used to thinking about, oh, there's going to be strength, there's going to be vitality, dexterity, vigor, the usual stuff, right? No. In here, there's wood, fire, metal, earth. Uh, which one is the other one? Wood, fire, metal, earth, and water. And basically, depending on uh, where you put your stats, it's going to influence you in different ways. So, for instance, wood increases your hit points. Uh, fire increases how much... Um, spirit you gain from attacking enemies and there's other things that each of these stats do but it's like each stat is going to have its own thing 
But the cool thing is that you don't just level up thinking about what is the passive effect of the stat. You go into the spell tree for each of the, the different stats that you're available in the game, and you're like, oh, I like this spell, so I'll probably work with this tree, and then that is going to influence which weapon you use, or you work backwards from there. You're like, oh, I really like this weapon, and then you look at which stat scales off of this weapon, and you're like, okay, so I need to play with this stat, and then you go to the spell tree, and you're like, oh, okay, and these are the spells that I'm gonna have to work around if I wanna be playing this weapon. So there, again, it all boils down to the amount of depth that you get to have when it comes to this game, the way that the combat works with the back and forth with the spirit gauge. It just all feels very satisfying, so long as it clicks, which I believe that, like, you know, if, if you're like me, you might be hesitant when you first start playing the demo because you're going to be like, oh, this combat system kind of weird, the way the character moves and there's something about it. Once it clicks, it feels so good. You're just, like, blasting through a level at, like, top speed, murdering everything along the way. Like, guys can see in the gameplay. Like, I'm familiar with the levels that I'm showing on this gameplay, which is only going to be the two levels that you can see in the demo, because I don't want to be spoiling levels for you guys. I want you to enjoy the game and enjoy the experience of playing it blind. But, you know, you can see me just basically blasting through the level, murdering everything, doing plunging attacks, doing backstabs, doing all these crazy things. Because once you master the the combat system that's kind of how it feels you're running through and you're just killing stuff and it just feels good now in terms of structure uh this game uses a mission structure in case you're wondering oh, is it going to be open world what are we going to have it is a mission structure but there's plenty of reasons to explore the entirety of the map in each mission not just loot but also the whole morale system that i talked about because you're going to be planting uh, flags in different locations of the map. Some of those flags are going to work kind of like bonfires where you can like uh, uh, refresh your potions and level up and all of this thing. But one of the really cool things that this game does and, and that I love when it comes to these flags is the fact that in order for you to recover your potions, you don't have to rest at a battle flag. And this is something that I really like. And, and let me explain to you guys why. See, when I'm exploring a level in a game like this, my thought process is I want to clear the whole level, right? I want to explore every nook and cranny. I want to kill every single enemy. And I want to be able to backtrack to see if I really got everything. Now, one of the problems with these types of games is that when you sit down and rest at, you know, at something that is a bonfire equivalent, which in this case, it's the battle flags. When you sit down and rest, basically all the enemies respawn. Which is like, okay, so if I want to explore backwards again, I have to go and murder everything again. But the way that it works in this game, because whenever you place down a battle flag, they recover your full health and all of your potions. So that basically allows me to use these checkpoints as an actual checkpoint in which I have to make a decision. There's a decision of risk-reward there. So usually I'll look at a battle flag location and I'll be like, okay, do I want to plant that flag now? Because planting the flag gives you a checkpoint. But at the same time, it refreshes your potion. So I'm like, say for instance, I have six max potions, right? I can have six potions max. And, that, and right now, let's say I have like four, right? And I'm going through the level and I'm thinking to myself, okay, here's a battle flag location, but I still have four potions. I'm going to explore some more, use up these potions while I do combat with various enemies. Then I'm going to come back plant the flag, activate the checkpoint, recover all of my potions and my full health, and then continue exploring the level without having any monsters respawn. And I love that choice. I love the fact that they give you that choice. And that's just the battle flags, because then there's also the marking flags. Now, the marking flags don't really recover your potions, but they fully heal you. So let's say I see a marking flag and I see a couple of enemies around. I'm like, I'm going to kill those enemies. Hopefully, I won't have to use potions, and then I'm going to go to the marking flag and fully heal myself, and I'll be ready to go. And that's without even talking about the morale system, because every, um, you know, every level, when you get started, usually you start at zero on the main level. Some of the side quests start you off at a higher level, maybe because you're instantly fighting a boss or something like that, so they'll give you like 20 morale or 10 morale or whatever. But there's a morale system in this game, and how does that work? So you're going to have a morale level and your enemies are going to have a morale level. And sometimes they'll throw a tougher enemy in a certain location of a level. At that point, you get two choices. You can either face against a tough enemy immediately or 
you can go gain morale throughout the level and then come back when you're stronger. And planting the flags affects your morale because there's a fortitude thing. I go over all of this stuff in my beginner's guide if you want to know more about it. But basically, fortitude is your base level of morale, but you can also go above your base level of morale by just killing enemies and doing good. So like usually, uh, a lot of the levels will cap you out at morale 20, but I've been in levels where I was like morale level 24 by the time I get to the final boss because I've been doing really well. The problem there is if you die, you're going to drop back down to morale level 20 because that's like your baseline from the fortitude that you've accrued throughout the level. But it, suffice it to say, I'm getting into the really nitty gritty of things, but I really enjoy what they've done because you might be wondering, well, what's so important about this morale system? The important thing about the morale system is that in a way, and this is just my interpretation after 30 hours, I could be a little bit wrong, but in a way, you know how sometimes you'll play through one of these games and you begin to overlevel your enemies and you just trounce everyone because you're grossly overleveled because, you know, maybe you farmed a little bit more than you should have or something like that. The morale system keeps things a little bit more challenging because even if you're a little bit overleveled, right, if you're fighting something that's five morale levels above you, that thing is going to trounce you unless you're really, really good at the game. So it keeps things challenging, even if you may be a little bit over leveled. It maintains a certain level of balance as you are going through these levels. That's not to say that you being more leveled has no effect because it clearly does. You're going to be more powerful. But the morale level keeps that kind of in check. It prevents you from just like blowing up and murdering everything at the beginning of the game. At least that's kind of the way that I feel about it. But it gives you a, an additional sense of progression throughout each of the levels, which is cool. It's appreciated because it's like, oh, I'm, I need to find these flags. And I just become obsessed with the flags. Like you'll see if you watch the playthrough, I'm just always like, oh, I got to find this flag. I got to find that flag. And one of the things that, that I've also done is after I do a recording, because sometimes it might be, so far there's been two maps where I didn't find all of the flags by the time I got to the final boss. And I was like, okay, fine. We'll do the final boss. I'll go off camera and I'll go find the flags later. And yeah, I, I'm actually doing that. And it's like, I don't need those flags for anything. It's just when I go to the mission thing, it then will, it will tell you like, oh, on this thing, you have seven out of seven marking flags and six out of six battle flags. And I'm like, yep, every mission needs to say that I've picked up every single flag even if I didn't on my first run through. So I'll go back and I'll try to find them. And it's, it's just fun. It's just fun. I've been uh, enjoying the game quite a bit. Another thing that Wolong has is also a companion system. So as you play through the game, you're going to be unlocking companions, which are these important characters in Three Kingdoms, right? And you're going to be able to summon them uh, into your world to help you out with different levels. Usually, whenever you're doing a brand new level, a, a new main mission, there's usually a companion with you there. As a matter of fact, even in a lot of the submissions, there's companions there. But you can summon additional companions. Like you can have up at least up to two companions that I've seen so far. I don't think you can have three. I think you can only have two companions. Uh, but you can summon an another companion to join in and help you out. And there's even uh, a gameplay reason to do that. That is not just involved with difficulty. Like some of the companions, not some of the companions, all of the companions have specific gear sets. And you can get their gear set if you basically farm reputation with them. So if you bring them out with you on missions and stuff like that, you'll eventually be able to get that gear set. At least that's what the game said. And that, that's something that I've been working towards. I'm going to get uh, the gear set of one of the characters uh, in the game. So, you know, I think that's an interesting system to, to have. And also, again, for people that tend to struggle with these games, they're like, hey, I'm going to bring in two dudes, and it is what it is. And you can just... And they can actually be really useful because one of the thing one of the systems that they do with the companions is uh, the same thing that you could do in Stranger of Paradise which is basically you can have your companions almost go into overdrive so you can buff them and that will like increase the, the amount of actions that they'll do and stuff like that and they'll be more aggressive so one of the things that I notice is like sometimes if I don't feel like tackling a really tough enemy like I don't want to be the the one in the front line I can just go like hey go get him and he'll just like jump in there and start attacking. This costs spirit gauge though, so it's not something that you can kind of just like abuse willy-nilly, but you know, spirit gauge is fundamentally infinite throughout the course of a level. So it does cost spirit gauge, so it's, you're not gonna be spamming it, but you can just have them open up on a monster for you, and then you can follow up and capitalize on when the monster's not paying attention to you and stuff like that. So there's a lot of 
stuff that you can do with companions as well, which is pretty cool. And finally, this is something very minor, but that I really, really like, is there's mantling in this game. There's verticality, so you can just, like, jump up walls and whatnot and climb and do things. And this is cool because very much in the in a similar vein to what you could do in Sekiro, you can take to the rooftops and you can just, like, backstab people from the air and you can instantly get one critical blow ahead of time if you plan stuff accordingly, which, again... If you happen to be someone that struggles with these types of games, you're going to be able to employ multiple strategies as to how you tackle the multiple challenges that the game provides to you, which makes it even more accessible. But, but, even though I've been saying that there's all these things that make it more accessible, there are still some difficulty spikes here and there. One of the first difficulty spikes that you'll face is going to be the very first boss that the game throws at you in the demo. <laughs> I think that that's kind of like a big ask for new players. But the thing is, once you climb that wall, it's pretty much, you'll, you should be able to kill everything that comes after that first boss. Because like everything that comes after it is tremendously easier than that first boss. Like, at least in my opinion, not even remotely close in terms of difficulty. Up until a certain level, which I'm not going to reveal, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but there's, after that, then there's a dude that shows up in there and is going to beat your face inside out yeah it, it's not gonna be pretty you'll see eventually but um yeah that's that's gameplay anyway in conclusion there really isn't a whole lot to say uh other than what i've already said in this video i'm greatly enjoying the game i think the game is tremendously fun i think i might even enjoy this game more than neo but again, like I said, I, I appear to be extremely vulnerable to recency bias, particularly when I'm having fun with the game. So I don't want to make that an absolute statement, but that's definitely the way that I feel. I feel like I like this more than you. I feel like the combat of Wo Long clicks with me more than the combat of Neo. To the point where I've experimented with all types of different weapons, all types of different builds, and I didn't experiment nearly as much when it came to Neo or Neo 2. Now, it is also important to say Neo or Neo and Neo 2 are fundamentally more complex than Wolong when it comes to their multiple systems. But I don't think that Wolong is losing anything by simplifying in the way that it does. That's my opinion. I like it a lot. And from what I've played so far, I think it's uh, assuming that there's no performance issues because whew, damn, after that Wild Hearts, after that Wild Hearts review, damn, I don't know if like when I get to my the 40 hours or something, all of a sudden some weird performance issue is not going to reveal itself. But uh, if performance stays the way that it is, it's pretty good. Not a whole lot of complaints. But again, you should test it out on your system because there's a demo available right now up until 26th of March. Recommend that. But yeah, overall, I've been having a blast with it. And if you enjoy these, these types of games, if you like the gameplay that you're watching on screen, most likely you're going to enjoy it too. But anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys are ready for a full playthrough of this. That's going to be hitting the channel. Also, my starter guide is going to be hitting the channel here pretty soon. So yeah, that's going to be it. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you did not enjoy the video, hit the dislike button. Feedback is important. If you usually like my content, subscribe, bell notification icon, all that jazz. I'll see you in the next one. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out.